and welcome back and today we want to have a look at the Synology Surveillance Station Beta so that's version 8.2 and this is a new beta that released from Synology and we're hoping by the end of the year we'll see it removed from beta or maybe even include, included in the next version of DSM, DSM 7 I believe. Now uh, with Surveillance Station it's always been probably one of my favourite surveillance platforms. Them and QNAP have really put time, energy and indeed money into this enterprise. Now so, uh, QNAP recently released their QVR Pro series of um, surveillance tools with lots of applications and you're going to see that on the channel in the coming weeks. But what I want to talk about today is this new beta because Synology's own software has always been very, very intuitive but it did lack a few of the more intuitive tools that the more enterprise level user has come accustomed to and got used to. They do have lots of features and functionality that I've not seen elsewhere. Home mode, for example, I've always been a big fan of that and we'll talk about that later on. But the number of things they've included in this new version of Surveillance Station is genuinely staggering. They've included all kinds of new features, functionality and applications that in many ways completely change Surveillance Station, which I know is a big, big boast but let me go through some of the details now for the course of this video we are going to be using uh, Synology it's the DS1618 there we are there and as you can see I've got the beta installed and if we click open it refreshes that tab that I already had open which has got surveillance station version 8.2 now again we've added a couple of cameras already to keep it nice and simple so if we go into the live view we've got the control deck there and there's that same office we were using for the previous video the same cameras as well and indeed that nice, easy, nice, straightforward means with which we can change our cameras. And this time we're not going to bug Richard. Richard's not here with us today. But I tell you what we are going to do, this time we're going to bug Eddie. We're going to have a look at Eddie there. Look at him. Look at his face. We can come out of there and we'll stick with what we're doing. But again, those that are familiar or watch my other video regarding Surveillance Station, you'll already be aware of a lot of the features and functionality of the existing version, the fully fledged version of Surveillance Station. Today I want to talk about some of the new bits and bobs. So some of the stuff we're not going to cover so much in this video, largely because of the way it's, you know, this video has been recorded on a desktop. Straight away, let's address one of the biggest changes to do with the mobile application. Let's talk, let's get the add-ons up. We, let's take a moment and talk about the mobile application because the new mobile application update found here, live cam, is the ability for you to turn your mobile phone into an IP camera that can be picked up by your um, surveillance NAS. So in real terms, what that means is if you've got an old camera knocking around or you want to use your mobile there and then, you are able to download it and it's available for iOS and Android, install that on your mobile device and then you can use your mobile phone as an IP camera. Of course, it will use one of the licenses on your surveillance station platform, but still nevertheless, it's great to be able to utilize mobile phones this way. Um, I'm just waiting for them to use USB cameras like QNAP. But again, we'll do another whole video on these two, as well as the next thing we're going to talk about, the live broadcast. This is the ability, and again, I'll do a whole video on this soon, which gives you the ability to stream live to YouTube your surveillance camera. And I know you're thinking how terribly unsafe that is, but hear me out. What this does give you the ability to do, in the same way anyone that's ever used YouTube and a lot of it's... Um, uh, live stream settings you need to get the, uh, the live stream key all of this is available in YouTube you just go to the left hand side go to the user account controls the live stream option and all this information is there readily available you select the camera so I've got two cameras connected to this copy of surveillance station and then that camera will live stream from the NAS onto your YouTube platform and I will make a video very soon where I will host a video live streaming from surveillance station just to show you just how easy that is and hopefully show you the setup as well. Now that's probably for me one of the most interesting things they did during the Computex um, show the Synology surveillance exhibition in, in Taipei when they did that they actually had the surveillance station live streaming for the entirety of the day and this is completely free you don't have to pay extra for this you just have to make sure you've got a YouTube account that supports live streaming um, on top of that some other applications that have been added and again we're not going to play with them too much there's smart time lapse smart time lapse gives you the ability to if you've got hours days months of recordings you can compress them to a point where you can browse through and fast forward through incredibly long videos hours and change those hours into seconds and to stream through much much faster 
than you could before. And again, this is another one of the applications I'm going to feature later on with some pre-made recordings. Um, again, going back here, we've still got more applications that are going to be added. We've got the dual authorization application. Now with this, this gives you the ability to not only set up your usual login credentials and user administration, but now you can create uh, a whole selection of roles where they have a, only a degree of control of the cameras or indeed control of the distributed files and folders. So again, you'd have to create users. Unfortunately, I haven't created any users in there, but this would let you hand select user by user and time manage it and date manage it a certain degree of control for your individual staff that can access it. So again, lovely amount of control and dual authorization is definitely one of the things that I'm looking forward to showing you in a more fully fledged video. Um, IP camera or IP speaker even is the ability to start adding IP speakers. And again, the picture tells you things a lot quicker than I ever could. It's, a, it's to help you with tannoy systems and effectively um, internet protocol audio mic in, mic out. So if you've got, I unfortunately don't have an IP speaker to hand, but this gives you the ability to add one to your surveillance platform so you can either use it to say, alert, alert, someone stealing the baked beans, or something a tad more important. Again, lovely little feature they've chucked in there. Alongside this, there's lots of extra tools and upgraded tools with regard to um, having it in a shop or having transaction management, stuff like that. An IO module is where you can integrate with your existing systems. So if you need to cross-reference, for example, footage against a certain transaction or purchase, and you're already running a system that supports this, this will now f fit in nicely with your existing subsystems alongside the already interesting access door control that lets you uh, synchronize your cameras with you know, on off, open, unlock systems that you might have in your home or office. There are loads of new applications included in this and that also includes the PC utilities. So if you wanted to use the desktop client for Mac or Windows systems, you can download it and again we're not going to use the client largely because i do want to continue to highlight that right now um synology seems to be the only platform that gives you the option of using either a downloaded desktop client program on your pc or mac or let you use the web browser which is what i'm using right now and people want to have the option they want to know that if they are somewhere they don't have an office in or using an unfamiliar computer, if they need to monitor their um, surveillance recordings or see it live, the last thing they want to do is to have to download and install a client on someone else's machine. And the same thing goes with the tools that have been added to interact and integrate with transaction management systems. And again, that includes tills, that includes stock management and stuff like that. Um, they've, alongside all of these features and applications, they've also uh, upgraded and improved a number of the key features of Surveillance Station in this new beta 8.2. And again, really looking forward to seeing the new version in action. Um, there's lots of stuff along the lines of, uh, they've optimized the timeline application. So once you're looking at um, a time period of when there's been recordings, as you can see here when I've been fiddling with the cameras, what they've done is optimize one, the type, the speed, so now you can go up to 32 times speed, which you couldn't before. I believe the limitation was 16 on the previous version. And then they've, they've improved the frame rates as well. You're probably going to see me walking through that room in no time, fiddling with those cameras there. And again, I'm not doing that. That's all happening in real time. Fast forwarding at 32 times speed, and it is legible. And that's two completely separate cameras monitoring the same area, which again, I'm quite impressed with. Now they've also optimized the archive vault to improve the amount of features and functionality of what you can do with your files and folders. So if we get that open up, let's take a closer look at that. Open that up and all the time, the device in the background is gonna be fiddling around and doing what we're doing. And the archive vault, will get that running. Also the more astute of you may have noticed, I'm probably not gonna mention this too much, but um, if you are running Axis cameras, what this will also do is give you the ability to get more integrated, um, uh, control of access cameras as well as getting a lot more of that analytical information from those cameras uh, which again if you're using I mean access cameras are vastly expensive if you remember the two that I were using with our QNAP videos a while ago you'll know that I mentioned the price of these cameras was 800 pounds a pop so if you're spending 800 pounds on an IP camera when you can pick up some pretty cheap non PTZ ones for about 30 quid you're going to want a lot from that. And this software is something that I think is going to help a lot of enterprise level users make the most of their surveillance equipment. So we'll just cancel that and come out of that. And we will run the archive. 
See, a number of you out there, oh, there's that live view. I am looking forward to doing that video with you guys regarding the live view. So with the Archive Vault, this is where we can actually have a better control and better um, allocation of our schedules as well, or our recorded footage. And again, where they live at what time of day, so we can branch out to night, day, and stuff like that. And again, the client management application is another area where we've seen improvement. Because this is where we can see the people that are accessing it, we can see what they can see, we can see what they're doing, and we can configure and remove them as we see fit. We can change what they can see and do, we can change everything. It's really nice to be able to live change, if you're an administrator, the depth and control that the average user has. Um, let's go back here, let's have a look at some of the other interfaces here. Have we missed anything out here? The Live View Multicast. Again, haven't had enough time to play with the Live View Multicast. I'm not hugely certain what it does. If we read through what it does on the screen, rather than keep you waiting on that one, it does mean, I believe this is more of a bandwidth saving tool, going by what we're reading here. And maybe it's the ability to stream a single recording to multiple sources without all of them having to have their own independent connection, which actually leads me very neatly onto the file sharing and link sharing um, part of this new version of Surveillance Station. Because when you want to share and send people your, um, your live camera feed, let's see if we can do it on here, because when I saw it originally, this was being done um, on uh, a demo sample that was being shown at one of the trade shows uh, in Germany. And what's quite interesting to do is give you the ability to um, just send a link. Previously, if you wanted to send someone um, your recording, if you wanted to show someone something happening on one of your cameras, be it a pre-recorded area or live recording, you had to go through all manner of crap to try and get someone to view this footage. If you wanted to say to someone, this is happening on the, in the building right now, if they didn't have a, a login credential and they didn't have all the information sharing a simple camera feed was very very tricksy you had a lot of hurdles now as sure as you've seen on screen you right click you stream share part uh, you share the stream path and that's it you can just send someone this link and that link well, let's actually enable it shall we and you can say how long it's going to be valid for and now that link in theory, let's see if it will work first time, because unfortunately I don't have outside access. Go for it there. Well, oh, that's embarrassing, isn't it? We'll have to find that out on the next video what exactly I did wrong. I'm sure someone there can tell me what I did wrong. But rather than keep you waiting, we'll save that for another video. Um, but again, this is a feature I saw at the trade show. It was quite impressive indeed. And I'm, it's my fault. We're not going to blame Synology for my ineptitude on that one. And again, there's lots of other little mini upgrades as well. For those of you that use the EMAP facility, there's the ability for you to upgrade SVG files to it, to have the layouts. And again, SVG is one of those things that I don't come across it much. I'm more of a PNG, JPEG, those sort of files. But a number of you out there, particularly for EMAPs, utilize this uh, file format to upload EMAPs of locations and where you want to add cameras to a blueprint of the area that you're monitoring. And again, there's a lot, it's lots of features and functionality like that. I am looking forward to doing a complete overview when this is no longer in beta. But again, do check out my other video regarding Surveillance Station because although it does amply cover Surveillance Station, it will give you a greater understanding of the differences between this version of Surveillance Station 8.2 in beta and 8.1. And just to let you see just how much has been done. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Uh, don't forget to buy your NAS from the guys at span.com, the NAS experts. Don't forget to follow the guides and subscribe at nascompares.com. And if you've got a question, why not send me a message via Twitter at Robbie on the Tube. Thanks for watching.